Proverbs 3 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own thinking, your own knowledge, your own way, your own thoughts. The rest of us say, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I hope that by the time you leave today that you've learned what trust in God means. Because I got something good to tell you today. I got something that is coming straight from God's mouth to your heart. It's not nothing to do with me, I'm just a messenger. Let me pray with you, Father. I pray today that you would open our hearts. That you would open our ears. I, I rebuke the power of the enemy that would try to plug up our heart and plug up our ears. Because there is a spirit of distraction mm-hmm. that's trying to sink into this church. And it happens every Sunday. And I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. The spirit of distraction that tries to get our minds off of our worship and on everything else. The problem, the drama, the situation, the person. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. It has no power in this place. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And we claim freedom in this house. Freedom in this house. Freedom in this house. Freedom, 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 freedom. I'm going to keep saying it because somebody claps. Freedom, 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 freedom. In this house, I'm tired of the devil thinking he's going to do something because he's not. He's not doing nothing. He's not doing nothing. Let us receive from you today, Lord. In your name, in your name, in your name. Not by our name, because our name does nothing, but it's your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give Jesus a hand clap of praise this morning? And then you can be seated. Yeah, I'm a little, um, I'm a little passionate about something this morning because I, um, I feel that there has become a spirit that's running loose in our church, and it's causing distractions. And as your pastor, I'm sick of it. Can I say that? And I'm not going to stand for it anymore. You know why? Because this is God's church. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to stand for distractions. We're not going to have it anymore. Because when you're distracted, you can't focus. And we need to be focused on Jesus and His, and His presence. Amen. You can cut the lights on. Um, that'll be great. Thank you. Thank you. That way I can see how pretty and handsome you are today. Some of you are just looking great. I mean, you got some conceited people like Jim and Braxton up here. By the way, um, Braxton... I don't post a lot on Facebook, but I had to post a picture of this wonderful guy I've seen at work at Chick-fil-A 
the other day. In case you're wondering what Chick-fil-A is, the new one that they just put on 29. And when I got there, I started eating. Melissa saw him come in, and I think he was getting ready for work. And he was back there flipping fries, cooking fries, and whatever you do with fries, you were doing it. And he did so good. My fries tasted the best that I've ever had in my entire life because the Admiral was flipping fries. It was the best tasting fry. Um, it was almost like he put them with love just for me. Um, that's true. I need to quit. That's right. I need to quit lying and just move on. You know what? I will tell you, it blesses me to see our young people when they're working or, or things like that. That's great. You, you need to. Um, it's a good thing to work. Um, learn that young, because you're going to do it a long time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody get excited with me about. I will say, though, I get to do what I love to do. I get the pastor. So um, if you're not working your dream job, I'm sorry for you, but I'm working mine. <laughs> Thank God. So I love to pastor and preach the word. Um, this is totally off topic. But regardless of what you do, do it for God. Do it for God, whatever it is, even if it's not your dream. Do it for God. Um, well, listen, we're starting a new series today. Um, I've been waiting for this. God showed me this at the first year, didn't give me any topics or anything, but just showed me the, the actual um, title, I guess, of the series. Um, we're starting a, a series called Summer School. Um, and we're going to pass out tests at the end of it, and you guys are going to. I'm just kidding, we're not going to do that. But, um, we're starting a series called Summer School. And um, let me just give you my quick syllabus or objective in this series over the next six weeks. I want to take you through a journey of getting back to the basics of Christianity. Um, it's not that we're not going to get deep, because we are. But I feel like sometimes we forget about what makes us get deep. And it's, and it's how we start, and it's the basics of Christianity. Um, there was a group called For Him back in the 90s. I don't know if you ever heard of them. I know this is completely throwback. You'll never, ever know what this is, young people. But um, For Him was a group in the 90s, and they sang a song called Back to the Basics, basically the basis of life. And um, it, the course was something like, um, We need to get back to the basics of life. Heart that is pure, and love that is blind, faith that is fervently grounded in Christ, the hope that endures for all time. I, I love that song. And it was a good song. Oh, you don't have to clap. I was just letting you hear it. So if you don't know that song, you can, you know, look it up. Um, and it might be too old for you guys, so you might just not want to worry about it. But um, for those of you who remember it, you might want to. Check it out. But during this series, that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of get back to the basics and dig a little bit deeper through the basics. And, and I'm, I just can't wait. Some of the things we're going to be talking about are going to seem at first simple to you. Oh, I know about this. I know about. But I want to dig a little deeper past just. I want to start with the basics, but get a little bit deeper in the word as well and bring it full circle to a way that maybe you've not heard it before. And if you have heard it this way before, then just humor me and amen me and clap anyway and let God bless you. But um, I, I just feel like this is something that we need to do. So our first topic this morning um, is entitled Trust in God. Trust in God. And i got to tell you before I get started that there is a difference between faith and trust. There's a difference. Faith is what you believe in. Faith means that you believe in a person. You have faith in a person or, or a particular thing. You, you, have, you have a belief system in it. You believe. I mean, if I said, do you have faith in God? Well, what am I saying? I'm saying that you have, do you believe in God? That's what I'm asking you. Do you believe in God? Do you have faith in God? And you would say, yes, I believe in God. But trust is not just like faith. 
Faith is the belief in God. Trust is believing in the abilities in what you have faith in. Okay? So, so you can have faith in something but not completely trust it. You can believe in something but not completely trust what you believe in. There are Christians walking around every day that say, I believe in the power of Jesus, but you don't pray like you trust the power of Jesus. You believe it, but you don't trust it. I think if we, um, if we had strong enough faith, you, you see, faith without works, right, is dead. What is works? Trust. It's trust. It's, it's a trust in what you believe and who you believe in. So just stay with me. I, I don't want you to get distracted while I'm trying to get this topic in here today. Because I got some stuff. Because, I, because this is why. I don't have a problem with the faith part. Hmm? Do you have a problem believing that God exists and that God loves you? I don't have a problem with that. But sometimes I have a big problem with trust. Why do I have a big problem with trust? Because I, don't, I can't understand why um, someone can live their life and murder people and rape people. Um, and, and do cruel things to, to people and act the way that they do and molest children and still be healthy in their bodies. But people who live great every day and love God and serve Him and go to church can be bad in their bodies. I don't understand that. I don't understand how, how people who are good people, who, who are good people who don't steal and they don't kill and they don't lie and they don't deceive and they don't do bad things still end up dying early at an early age. I don't quite understand that. And how someone who, who is a bad person can live and, and never have an issue. I don't understand. I don't see how some people, God can still allow them to even walk the earth the way they live. But yet some people who are so good leave this earth so quickly. I don't understand why my grandmother, who in my eyes was one of the best people I'd ever known, who loved God and was filled with the Spirit and power, had no legs. I don't understand why she had congestive heart failure and had to die at the age of 70. I don't understand that. And why someone who doesn't even love God can live to be 95. I have trust problems sometimes. Um, you can sit there and judge me if you want to, but so do you. How many of you wonder why certain people get killed and certain people don't? Why do certain people why do certain people have so much money and they cheated their way to the top to get it and other people are working hard every day of their life and barely scrapping by? I have trust problems sometimes. I don't understand. I have complete faith in God, but sometimes I just I have problems trusting in, in why. I don't understand why. I don't get it. And so today I want to dig deep in this thought. Just don't go anywhere. Stay with me. Stay focused. Because I'm hoping I can change something in your thinking because something that God showed me this week changed my thinking a little bit. So please don't check out on me and go anywhere. Just I really want you to get what, what God's put in my heart to tell you today. There was, a, there was a little girl that was walking across this little tiny bridge and she was walking with her dad, and on both sides of the bridge, it was all they could do to get by. And they actually had to walk single file, so the dad was in front, the little girl was behind, going across this little bitty bridge, and on both sides was jagged rocks. And down, if, if you would have fallen down, you would have hit these rocks and also fell into this, this river. And as they were walking, um, the, little, the, the, the dad looked at the little girl and said, grab my hand before they got to the bridge, grab my hand. And the little girl said, no, Daddy, you grab my hand. And he turned around and said, why? why? Why won't you grab my hand? And she said, because if I grab your hand and I start to slip, I might actually let go. But if you grab my hand, I know you'll never let go. You see, that's called trust. The thing about trust that's so special is when you trust someone to think and know that they'll never let go. That's what trust is. Trust is knowing that regardless of whether, uh, of what God leads me into, He can pull me back out at any given time if He needs to. Trust is trusting that if God tells me to go to a certain place or do a certain thing, He's already went before me to prepare the path for me to get there. Even when I can't see His hand working, I know He's already been there. So that's trust. Trust is saying, God, you grab my hand 
because I know you'll never let go. Trust is knowing that His love never runs out. Trust is saying that His mercy and grace is new every day. See, that's not faith. Faith believes in God, but trust is in His abilities of what He does for you each and every day. Trust, trust, trust in God. And the children of Israel had this issue. They, 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 I would say that they could have had an issue rather with trust because, um, think about it for a moment, they um, had their leader Moses and Moses um, dies, and, and, but before Moses dies, of course, you know, they see, get out of Egypt and slavery, they go across the Red Sea. Um, of course, they spent 40 years wandering around complaining um, like a bunch of goofballs, but, you know, they could have had milk and honey a whole lot earlier, but anyway, and so they spent I'm complaining. Well, Moses dies and Joshua takes takes over. And, and Joshua looks at the people and says, sanctify yourselves. They're camping out, you know, camping out, trying to figure out how they're going to get across the Jordan River. And he looks at the people and he says, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Right? And, and so the, the next morning they get up and they get the Ark of the Covenant and they go across the Jordan River just like they did the Red Sea where they keep going and keep going and things keep progressing. Well, now all of a sudden they're in the middle of, of looking at this big wall of Jericho. Now, I did some research and I could not get an answer. I wish I could have gotten for you. I, I searched and searched and searched. I was trying to figure out exactly how big the city of Jericho was. And there was too many different speculations. I'll give you the closest accurate thing that I can think of. One guy compared it to about a 30-mile uh, radius. Now, I don't know. Do not quote me on that. I'm just, I was looking up some things. Some people said 10 acres, and I don't know. But but it was larger. It was pretty large. Um, I'll put it that way. And and the walls actually were not just standing straight up, but they were actually on a, on a slope. I did some research about this. And, and so you, they were sloped, and, and, and they were up, but they were also kind of sloped off. And there were people's houses that was built into the walls inside the city. So, you, you know, you would be fortified. You could, and the people most time that was building the walls were the, were the actual soldiers. I'm giving you some background because i got a point for this. And so the soldiers' houses and their families were right up against the wall. That way, if they had an attack, they could come right out and they would be ready for battle. They were right up against the wall where the enemy would come. And so the children of Israel, of course, are in this position. So, so they, they know they've got to conquer Jericho. Well, God comes to Joshua, and he tells Joshua, Hey, Joshua, um, you guys are going to march around this city for seven days. And on the seventh day, you march seven times. And on the seventh time around, when the horns blow the longest, when they blow a long time, I want you to tell the children of Israel to shout with a voice of victory. And the walls are going to come down, and you're going to go into Jericho and conquer that city. Okay? Most of you know that story. If you don't, I just gave you a really quick synopsis. So that was the plan. Now, I want to note something here that the children of Israel did not know the plan. All they knew was that they had to march. They didn't know it was going to be seven days or seven times. Or, okay. Joshua just said, listen, I want you to march around this city and keep your mouth closed. Keep your mouth shut. Now, I preached a message a while back about how sometimes we talk ourselves out of marching, and I'm not going to get into that, but I want to I want to just put something out to you that sometimes you're going to be marching, and you're not going to know why. You're going to be going around your walls, and you're not going to know why. And there are sometimes you're not going to go seven days, you're going to go seven years. Sometimes you're going to keep pushing and pursuing for a lot longer than you thought you were going to have to go. God's going to tell you to keep doing something time after time after time and keep being faithful time after time and keep pressing and praying time after time after time. And you're going to thank God, I've been doing this for 10 years and I'm not seeing any results yet. But if God didn't tell you when the end was going to be, you just keep going till he, till he does it. You, 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 don't have a, you don't need to try to speculate on when it should end. You just keep marching and you do exactly what God instructed you to do. So, so they keep going and, and they keep pressing and and, and here's, here's where trust comes in, because I want to show you how trust works into this, okay? On day one, they're, they're, they're marching around the city. And the reason some scholars say it was a big city, because they think it took all day because they got up at sunrise and marched. And so some people think that it could have been 
a 30-mile radius, and that's why it took all day long to walk around that city. Now, you got to understand that while they're walking, um, they don't have sketch-or-go walks. And, um, you know, these nice uh, Dr. Scholl's pads in their sandals. Um, they're marching and walking, and it's hot, and there's blisters on their feet, and they're dirty, and they've been camping out, and they haven't been getting good sleep, and, and they march all day, and then they go back in the tent, and then they get up at sunrise, and they do it again. Every day, all those days, they get up, and they keep going at the grind. They keep pressing. They, they keep marching. And, and, and it wasn't a very pleasant sight. You think, well, when we tell the story, we just tell about the walls falling down flat. Well, what about the embarrassment that it had to be to march around while these soldiers are mocking you and pointing at you and, and laughing at you, saying, what are you doing marching around the city like this? This is stupid. But they couldn't even respond because they couldn't talk. How aggravating it is to get picked on and you can't respond. I want to just pick up a rock or something and just, you know, I'd at least want to point back and, and point my finger or shake my fist or, or, or something. I mean, I mean, let me do something. I, I got to at least say something back. Sometimes where we get in trouble is when we say something back. You know, um, it, it's not necessarily the, the fight that we're worried about. It's why we got in the fight to begin with. And a lot of times it can be our own fault. So anyway, so they're marching. And, and, and I, want you, I want to put something in your head. They won, and they looked, and they're going around the walls, and nothing's happened to the walls. Day two, they're going around the walls, and not a rock has fell, not a pebble. Nobody's doing nothing. They're just marching. They're just marching. They're just doing what they've been told to do. Day three comes, and they're marching, and nothing's happening. And day four comes, and nothing's happening. Can I tell you that their faith in God has not went away, but the trust in why they're doing what they're doing and nothing's happening has to be in their minds a little bit. I'm marching and I'm going and nothing's happening. I got blisters on my feet. I'm tired. I'm wore out. I'm dirty. I smell bad. But I keep marching, and I can't speak about nothing, and I'm not seeing anything happen, and one of the worst spots you can be in your life is where you're doing what God wants you to do, but you're not seeing anything change. You're, you're, you're praying like you've never prayed before, you're fasting like you've never fasted before, you're seeking God, you're doing all the right things, you're, you're giving in the offering, you're, you're doing everything, you're coming to church, you're worshiping, you're praying for God to do something miraculous in your life, and in essence you're marching around your walls and not a rock's fall, fallen, not a pebble's fallen, nothing's going on, and so your faith in God is not going anywhere, but your trust in His ability is starting to be a little bit weird. Because I can understand, like, if I was, if I was on the, I would, I would be okay marching, but on day three or four, I'm more out. Can you at least show me something, a sign that God is actually working? Can you at least show me a rock falling or, 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 or a pebble falling, hitting the ground, or maybe the wall starting to crack a little bit? Like, that would give me more motivation to walk. But when our motivation's based on our results, Our focus goes on the end and not the journey. And sometimes God doesn't want you to focus so much on the end results. He just wants you to keep focused on why you're doing what you do. You're not marching around your walls necessarily because it's, it's pleasant. Because realize something that all God had to do was speak to that wall and the walls would have fell down. Right? Could he not done that? Could God not have walked up and told Joshua, I want you on the first day to get the children of Israel. I want you to just walk out near the wall and surround the city. He could have told Joshua, surround the city. And I'm gonna, I want you to blow the ram's horns. And when they blow, I want everybody to shout. And the walls are going to fall down on day one. He could have done that. Could have done that. But if every time you needed to trust God... It happened on day one. Then you'd never learn how to trust God on day six. 
And many times God doesn't want to teach you how to trust. You can't be taught how to trust in something unless there's something to be trusted into. And if you're walking and every time you pray, God, I need you to do do this for me, I need you to do that for me, and it happens immediately, then your, your trust doesn't have to grow. There's no trust that has to happen. But when you're praying and you're not seeing nothing and God keeps saying, I want you to keep giving, well, God, every time I give, my account gets smaller. <laughs> and you want me to keep giving? I thought you were going to show up in something. I talked to a person one time and they said, I, I kept giving in my tithe and offering every week and my account kept getting smaller and smaller to the point to where I didn't have any more money. And I thought, well, God, how can I give and keep giving this particular way? And they said, all of a sudden, out of the blue, they just started getting gifts from other people. And things just started happening. People were giving them food. People were giving them money. People were doing this and doing that. And this isn't a message about tithing. That'll be later on. But my point is, when God commands you to do something, you go into it full blast, trusting in Him, thanking Him, knowing that He's going to provide the way. He'll provide the money. He'll provide the food. He'll provide anything that you need. He'll give you the strength to keep walking. I'm sure after day five, it was probably getting a little tough. And they were probably, you know, a little bit hard, but they just decided. I'm going to keep moving, and I'm going to keep my mouth shut while I'm doing it, because that was what I was told to do. I'm going to keep trusting. I, I got to keep trusting. I got to keep going. I got to keep moving. And sometimes trust never comes with a sign. And the hardest thing that we have to deal with as Christians is trusting when we see no sign. When we see no sign. One of the Worst feelings, Melissa and I, or at least me, I can't speak for her, but for me, we were going to the beach a couple, uh, two, three weeks ago, and our GPS took us away I've never been. And we went down this road that was, compl- when I say deserted, nowadays, now, some of you who are um, um, wiser, when I'm going to say old, wiser, um, have remember a time where you went down roads and you could go down a road for 30 minutes and not see a car. Anybody remember those days? I don't. My dad was telling me about it. So I can't. I don't. But I felt like I took a time warp 50 years back because Melissa and I went 30 minutes and didn't see a car on this road. Let me tell you, folks, um, I, don't, I don't know a time where the speed limit was 55 on a dirt road. But it was. I'm driving mile after mile and I'm not seeing a car. I'm not seeing a house. I'm not seeing anything. And I'm going, like, am I on a four-wheeler path? Or I, I, I don't understand why my GPS took me down this way. And when you get in the middle of nowhere with your GPS, guess what? The only thing you can do is trust your GPS. Right? Because there's no going back. You're trusting it. You've already drove 15 miles in. It's saying you got 15 more miles to go on this little road. I'm looking at Melissa. She's going, have you ever been this way? Mm-mm. I don't think anybody has. You know, there's nobody coming. And, 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 and so I'm, I'm like, this is, this is nuts. This is crazy. What, what, what's going on? And, and this occurred to me last night when I was studying back over this message that it's in the middle of the problem, the middle of the chaos sometimes. So when there's nobody else that can advise you, there's nobody else that can help you, you see no more cars coming, you see no houses for help, all you know is you're in the middle of trees, you're in the middle of a dirt road, and you don't know exactly where you're at, but there's one thing you've got that you can hold on to, and it's your GPS. And God spoke to me last night, and he just brought it to my, my remembrance, and he told me that there are some times in your walk with him that he's going to tell you to go down a road that nobody else has ever traveled before, and he wants you to do it because nobody else could do it, and he says, if you'll keep going down this path, I know you feel lost, I know you feel abandoned, I know you're not seeing nobody else coming, and, and you're on this dirt path, 
But if you'll just trust in what I tell you to do, if you'll just keep pushing even though you don't see the light, you don't, you don't know the end result, you don't, you don't know. He said, I'm the Alpha. I started you. I'm the Omega. I'll be at the end. I'll be there when you get there. I've got the road at the end. So if you'll just keep pushing and pushing and go and move, then I'll be there when you get there. But you can't stop halfway because you done came this far. And the children of Israel are probably thinking on day four, we can't stop now. We've already came this far. And the worst problem that you can be in is where you're trusting in something that you don't see the end. You're, you're trusting in something that you can't see the end result. Maybe that's why God says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the first and the last. I'm the beginning and the end and all in between. Maybe maybe that's where trust comes in. Actually, sometimes trust can come with no sign and, and that's probably the way God wants it to be. Pray a lot, so I want to borrow you a minute. Poor guy. He gets pulled up for examples and all kinds of stuff. Well, so I, I told Alex earlier this week, and I told him that uh, that God impressed on me to, to use him as an example for something. And let me tell you my original plan, because God changed it on me. Like he, because I have to trust God. My original plan was I was going to get Alex to. Um, we were going to go back to back, and he was going to lean against me, and I was going to go down. And then God spoke to me last night when I was studying this text and said that some of the issues that we have is trying to lean too much on people. And that when our trust becomes in a person, a person can only hold so much. And when we try to trust in a person so far, we not only break ourselves, but we break them. And so God told me I can't do that. But what he did want me to show you is to go over here and lean up against that wall. I want you to go and I want you to lean up against that wall. Now, I want you to stay with me because I got a point for this. So watch. Because there's something about a brick wall that if I got every person up out of this church and told you to lean up against these brick walls, they're not going anywhere. They're not moving. They're stable. They're stable. And as long come back out a little bit more, like like lean a little bit further back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, if I were to tell Alex, hey, I want to bring Braylon up here, and I want you to lean on Braylon, it would probably be an ugly scene. Poor Braylon, right? This is what we try to do, though. Just, just stay with me. We take a person or a place or a thing the size of Braylon, and we try to lean on it. Watch. Trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean. Not to yourself. When we try to lean, when Alex, if he would try to lean on Braylon, it's going to be a mess. When we try to lean on things that can't hold our burden and our weight and our cares and our problems, it becomes a mess for us. And a lot of times the reason we're not trusting the way we should is because we're leaning on the wrong stuff. As long as you're leaning on something... You learn how to trust it. Alex didn't even think about what He walked straight over here, leaned up against the wall. No big deal. No problem. He leaned straight up against it. He's out right now. If he were not leaning on something stable, he would fall down right now because of how he's leaning. If we're ever going to learn how to trust God, we've got to learn how to lean on God. We've got to learn how to lean completely on Him to the point to where 
if, if we're going to fall, it's going to be because He let us fall. That's how we lean on God. We lean on Him and put our whole weight on Him. What does that mean? My ca- I cast my cares upon you. I cast my burdens upon you. I cast every issue upon you. I give you everything that I'm struggling with. I just lean back on you. You told me to come this way. I'm just going to lean back on you because He can hold your weight. He can hold all of our weight together. He can, you can put your family on God's back. You can put your job on God's back. You can put your finances on God's back. You can put your troubles on God's back because He can hold you up. He can hold you up. He can, he can hold you there. And, and, and so as long as you're learning to trust, you've got to learn to lean. You've got to learn to lean. Because because, watch this, because anybody can stand straight up, but it takes trust to lean back. That's where your trust comes in. Trust doesn't mean I'm standing. Trust means I'm leaning. I'm leaning on you, Jesus. I'm leaning on your arms. I'm resting. I'm resting. I'm resting, I'm resting, I'm resting. There was a song that came out years ago. I, 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 it's probably one of my favorite songs. It says, it says um, it, it, I don't know if you remember, a guy named Kurt Franklin. Um, before y'all you know, stomp, Kurt Franklin, it was back in the 90s. He had a jam called Stomp. I'm not singing Stomp, by the way, because I can't, I can't rock Stomp. Maybe Alex can rock Stomp, but I can't rock Stomp. So, but he did have a song. And it was called, I Know That I Can Make It. And it said something like, um, um, the first verse said, and I'm just singing this for your own benefit because I've got a point to make, so don't think I'm trying to sing, but just sing. But they're, they're, the, the first verse said, um, You don't have to worry, and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning, troubles they don't last always. For there's a friend named Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say... Now, now the first verse, you know what that means to me? If my heart's broken, you know who can put that back together? It can't be a person. It has to be Him. It can't be my buddy. It has to be Him. It has to be Him. Then the Course says, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. I can stand. I can lean. I can. Because no matter what may come my way, what my life is in your hands. Now, the second verse said, So when your tests and trials, they seem to get you down. Watch. And all your friends and loved ones, the people you were trying to lean on, they're nowhere to be found. But what? But remember there's a friend named Jesus. That's your leaner. That's the one you lean on. Who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. You can make it. You can, I know that I can stand, I can lean, I can trust, no matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands, my life is in your hands. That means if my life's in your hands, then I'm trusting you with my life. I'm giving you my life. I'm giving you my problems. I'm, I'm giving it to you. Let me read a scripture for you right quick. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. I'm almost done. Psalm 91, 2. Listen to this. It says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. I'll read that part again. I will say of the Lord, of, of, of the Lord, I know that I can make it. I will say, He is my refuge. I know that I can stand. He's my fortress. Because no matter what may come my way, I'm hiding behind Him. I'm putting my life in His hands. I'm, he's my refuge. He's my strength. He's my strong. I'm leaning on Him. I'm leaning on Him. It says, my God in Him will I trust. Will I trust. 
I'll, 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 I'll trust in Him. I'll trust in Him. I'll trust in Him. We've got to be like the children of Israel that we'll keep marching and obeying even when we're not seeing any signs of what we're doing is making an impact. Even when we see that where we're heading doesn't look like it's anything particular, all we know is that we're marching and moving and, and we're, we're, we're trying to go the direction that He's put us to go. We're, we're purposed, we're destined to go this way, but we can't understand His ways and we can't understand His thoughts and, and we don't quite understand. So, so let me tell you the rest of the story. If, if you know it, fine. If you don't, I'll tell you again. And, and so the rest of the story it says that the children of Israel marched around on the seventh day and on the seventh day, they marched seven times. And at the end of that seventh time, they got around it and they surrounded the city. And all of a sudden, the ram's horns blew a long blast and, and they began to shout with a voice of victory. And the earth began to move. And fly. it's like almost like a big thunderous boom. And the walls, the Bible said, they fell down flat. Wait a minute. I said earlier that there were houses of guards in the enemy locked up against the walls that they thought were secure. The enemy can make it seem like his walls are stronger than your God. That his strongholds of your mind and your heart are stronger than what God can get rid of. But when it comes to the seventh day and you've obeyed and you've stayed the course and you've kept your trust in God, at the end of that seventh day, when you're looking at your wall and you know that God has told you that when you hear the sound of the victory horn, I want you to raise your hands and worship. I want you to shout with a voice of triumph because your victory is coming. The very wall that Satan thought he was going to put you in and hold that he thought he was going to put you in will actually be used against him to crush him. The very wall that the enemy thought was secure and stable to them that, 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 that they thought nobody could penetrate, God can get through any obstacle, any barrier, any wall, any temptation, any trial, everything that you think that God can't do sometimes that you're wondering, this wall's bigger than I've ever imagined in my life. So, but that's when you have to completely trust God. You have to completely rely on Him. You have to fully have trust and confidence in Him. It's not, it's not about your faith at that point. It's about your trust. It's about your trust. It's about, God, I, I, completely, I completely trust you. I completely trust you. I completely trust you because, can I tell you something? I want to give you a cool quote. Can I tell you a really good quote I want you to remember when you leave out of here? Man says, watch, show me and I'll trust you, right? If you show me, I'll trust you. If you do what you say you'll do, then I'll start trusting you. God says, trust me and I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you after you trust me. You know, the biggest problem that we have is we want God to show us, and then we'll trust Him. We, we want God to, to basically show us how He's going to deliver us, and then we'll say, oh God, now I trust you. Read in the Bible of the people, because this is just one story. Read in the Bible where the people... In, in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, where they had to learn to trust God before He sh showed them anything. Where, where do you see? Where do you see that David knew that Goliath was going to die by the one stone he picked three up? Right? Trust. You don't know the future, and all you have is the present. But you walk in the footsteps of the one who's already walked your future. You're, you're moving in a direction that God has already moved for you. Some of you, myself included, we're having trouble trusting God, but we're not having trouble with faith. Belief. And there, there was a story I want to I share with you that 
I thought went with this, and some of you may have heard this story before, but if you haven't, I want to tell it to you. There, there was a fire that broke out in the home, and this little boy was upstairs when it broke out, and all the parents and everybody left. And they went outside because their meeting place was outside at the mailbox at the road. And so they were they were out there, and, and they were looking for their son because that was the meeting place, and he wasn't there. And so they they were they were just the fire was burning so bad in the bottom half that the roof began to start coming down, and and the house was full of smoke, and and the little boy began to go out his window, and, and they couldn't. You know, he just, he was screaming for help. He couldn't even see because of the smoke was coming out. And his room was full of fire. There was no getting out. The only escape was his window. And so he begins to scream and he can't see anything. And all of a sudden, he hears his dad say, son, jump. And the son looked down and he couldn't see his dad. He couldn't see anything. He just felt the smoke and smelt the smoke and felt the fire and, and, and he began to and he began to scream and, and, and just he was horrified. He said, Dad, I can't see you. I'm not jumping because I can't see you. I can hear you, but I can't see you. His dad said, I need you to jump, son. Just jump. And the son said, One more time, Dad, I can't I cannot see you down there. The dad said, But I can see you. In your life, can I show you how faith and trust works? Faith said, like the little boy, I can hear you. Sometimes you can hear God, but you can't feel Him or see Him. I can hear you, but I can't see you. That's where trust comes in. Because now you have to trust in His ability to catch you when you do what He tells you to do. But if God tells you to jump, He's strong enough to catch you. If God tells you to move, He's strong enough to go with you. If God tells you to pray, if God tells you to fast, if God tells you to do anything, He's already strong enough. He's already big enough. He's already great enough. He just wants to test and say, are you going to lean on me? Are you going to lean on me for your strength? Are you going to lean on me for my power? Are you going to lean on me when you need me the most? Are you going to lean on me? Because if you'll lean on me, I'll show you how strong I am. If you'll lean on me, I'll show you that I can heal you. If you'll lean on me, I'll show you that I am in control and I've always been in control. If you'll lean on me, I'll show you how strong and how awesome I really am. If you'll lean on me, I put you in this position not to kill you, but to show you how awesome I am. I didn't put you out here in the middle of nowhere so that you would be panicking. I put you out here in the middle of nowhere so that you would not rely on anything else or anybody else except me. So I brought you to this point to show you that I'm strong enough to hold you. See, that's the difference. In trusting trusting and just believing. If you trust, you lean. You won't just lean a little bit. You'll lean all the way to the point to where the only thing keeping you up is His arms. That's trust. That's complete trust. That's when you learn to lean. Stay with me. Bow your heads with me, close your eyes. What's up? If I could put it the right way, there's a mixed bag of people in the church today. There's a mixed bag. There's some of you that came in here and you feel completely like you're in the middle of that road that I was talking about. To where you've got nothing to rely on except that that GPS told you to come out here. You're not seeing any answers. You're not seeing anybody else. You feel like it's just you. Then there's some people here that you feel like you're the little boy 
and you've got danger around you. You've got obstacles around you. And you can hear God telling you an instruction, but you're afraid to do it. You're afraid to pursue it. You're afraid to step out. You're afraid to jump. There's people in here today that you're searching for peace to give you the answer. You're searching for, for peace to show you what to do next because you're, you're in the middle of something and you don't know what road to take. And you're waiting for God to tell you, turn here, go here. And, it, and it's not faith you're having a trouble with, it's trust. God, do you know what you're doing? Do you, you understand what position you're putting me in? God, I've been like this for 15 years. I've been in this situation for a long time and nothing's changed. And, and I'm having problems trusting you. I'm having problems trusting in what you say. I'm having trouble marching and moving and continuing to pursue. I, I don't know. I don't sometimes know if you're even in control. I, I don't feel you. There's a mixed bag. There's a lot of different things, different people here. Some of you, some of you are so torn to the point to where you're almost thinking about going back. And to you, I want to tell you that you can't go back now. Because what you don't know is you may be on day six. You may be on day five. You might be right at the breaking point of a wall, falling, and you're getting ready to go backwards. So with nobody looking, nobody... Because it's, it's not nobody's business, but... But I want to get a, give you a, an invitation. I want to give you an invitation to come to an altar where the Holy Spirit has promised to meet you here. And my invitation is for any of, any of you, any of that mixed bag that might have hit you, I want you to come and I want you to receive the strength and the peace, but I want you to learn to trust. And what God's promised me and you today is that He'll meet us at this altar, and I'm not saying that you're going to walk out with your situation changed, but you're going to walk out with your mind changed and how you view how you trust. So my invitation is, will you come? Will you step out? And will you allow God to do that for you this morning and give you the strength to trust? Come on, will you join these that are coming? Come on, step out, come, let God do that work in your life. Come on, there's some people that need, you need to bring somebody with you there's some people that need to grab somebody beside of you and say, I want you to come pray with me. I want you to come up here and pray with me because both of you are struggling with something. Come on. Why don't you do that? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? They're going to sing. I want you to know the altar's open. I want you to come. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pray for you this morning. I'm going to actually pray myself. And I want you to just find, because trust can't come from me, and it can't come from other people. So I want you to find your, your trust in God this morning. Come on, as they sing, the altar's open. Standing here with me. I'm coming clean The secrets I'm keeping Cause so much pain The ones I love more They're falling apart 
we go, can we just lift our hands one more time? I feel a, a sweet spirit today in the church. A sweet spirit today. It's a spirit of peace. I feel it from the beginning. It's just a, it's a peaceful spirit. Pray for those that needed to feel you in a way today, God. Maybe they needed to come to the altar, and for whatever reason they didn't come. God, I just I pray that you would give them what they need, give them what they need anyway. And Lord, give them boldness. Courage, strength. So for those that came today, I pray that you would bless them with that supernatural peace and rest. And I pray for all of us today that we would learn to trust and lean. Lean not to ourselves, lean not to other people, lean not on things that we think are secure, but lean on what is secure. 
And that's only you. You're the only stability that will never fail us. We ask that you would hold our hands. Put, we put our life in your hands. We trust you. We do have faith, but we trust you. We trust you. We trust you. Trust you for your abilities. Trust you. If you can't do it, it can't be done. Trust you. I want to remind you of one more, one more time that quote that man says, show me, and I'll trust you. God says, trust me, and I'll show you. Some of you are waiting on God to do something, and the reason he hasn't done it yet is because you're wavering in your trust. You're not leaning completely. If you ever want God to show you something great, you've got to learn to lean all the way Give it everything. Lean all the way. All the way. All the way. Amen. I want to tell you to pray for Melissa and I this week. We are driving up to uh, Whittier uh, for our camp meeting uh, for our state. <laughs> Excuse me. So we'll be gone um, for Saturday of this week. We'll be back. For Sunday next week, but just pray for us. That's a long drive, and uh, pray that we have a good meet with God over there. And that there's a there's a lot of I'll tell you this real quick. There's a lot of pastors that go to those camp meetings and they're hurting, and their churches are hurting, and they need a touch from God. So be praying for us this week for our safety and for those pastors, ministers that are there, that God would do a great work. How about let's learn to trust God better? Can we do that? Can we do that? I do want to remind you, don't forget on your way out to give. Give in the tithe and offering and let God bless you through that. As only He can, He will truly bless you for that. Let me pray with you, and I'm going to dismiss you and let you go. Lord, thank you for your goodness and grace and mercy. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that your love never ends. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for meeting with us and giving us peace and rest. Lord, I pray that you would give us boldness and courage to trust you even in the middle of nowhere, even when there's no rocks falling from our walls and we're just marching. That's all we've got. All we've got is a word, but we're doing it. All we've got is a direction, but we're taking it. All we've got is a command, but we're obeying it. And I pray that you would give us the boldness to do it, to keep doing it, to not quit now, but to keep going because you know the end result. And the purpose of our journey could just be to strengthen our trust. Because with stronger trust and stronger faith, we can move mountains. So Lord, I pray that you give us that today. Bless those who give this morning. I pray that you would give back abundantly to them. And touch those who are struggling their finances, God, and bless them today. Use us this week. Mold and shape our lives. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. See you next Sunday.